Amen. Ensuring that the word of God gets in them, becomes a part of them, and that they're being strengthened. You and Minister Waikita, we thank God for you tonight. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Smith household. We thank you. We love you tonight. Thank God for you. He's a great and mighty God and worthy of every praise. Every praise. Amen. Let's bring our hearts in. Let's bring our hearts together. Uh, that we are one people with one sound, with one praise. Giving God glory. Father, tonight, you are amazing. Hallelujah. 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 You are amazing. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We honor you in this place. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you, Father, that you've allowed us this privilege that we might call upon your name. Oh, God, we look unto you, for you are the author and finisher of our faith. You do all things well, whereof we are glad. Thank you that we enter your gates with thanksgiving. Thank you that we are entering your courts with praise. We are thankful unto you and we bless your name for you are good and your mercy is everlasting. You are an everlasting God. You are an eternal God. He that was from the beginning is, was, and is to come. Our God is endless and timeless. He holds our frame in his hand. Father, we give you praise that you called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We thank you that salvation is even available tonight to that one that would call upon you, that one that would give their heart, their mind, their spirit to you tonight. Father, salvation is in the room. Healing is in the room. Deliverance is in the room. Filling is in the room. And so God, whatever it is your people need from you tonight, you know best. You know best how to serve it. You know best how to give it. You know best how to deliver it. And so God, we thank you that your people tonight are receiving from your heart. We give you praise and glory for every person, every household, every family, every individual that has gathered tonight, that we may call upon your name together, that we may lift the name of Jesus. For we understand that when we raise the name of Jesus, he draws men to him. And so tonight we lift you. We lift the name of Jesus. We lift him in the atmosphere. We lift him in every arena. We plead the blood of Jesus over every person, over every household, over every child, over every man, woman, boy, and girl. We thank you, Father, that you are keeping us by your word. Thank you that you've given us a heart of worship, that you've given us a heart of praise. And so, God, as we gather as one, both in spirit and in person, we thank you, Lord God, that you receive one praise, that we sound, uh, we, we, we join our sound, the sound of heaven, that there may be unity amongst us, that there be one, may, may be one amongst us. We know, oh God, it's in that place of unity, and it's in that place of oneness that you command a blessing. So thank you for releasing blessings upon your people. Thank you that you've called, kept us healed, kept us delivered, kept us set free. Father, even right now, we thank you for this nation. We thank you for the earth realm. Father, where there has been predictions of resurgence, COVID. Father, we thank you right now that you are causing people to stand in wisdom, that we are walking in wisdom of your word. Father, where the enemy has tried to slip in, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that although the weapon form, it will not prosper. And so we cover every family, every household, every individual that has been affected and is currently affected by COVID-19. And we plead the blood of Jesus and declare that healing is the children's bread. So, Father, we receive it now because your word tells us by your stripes we are healed. And we thank you, Father, that we are able to walk in divine health. Cover your people. Cover your people. Lift the bereaved. Lift those that are, that are suffering. Lift those that are dealing with loss. Father, we thank you that you are a comforter. You are, a you are the glory and the lifter of our heads. And so we thank you tonight. We thank you for the school grounds. We thank you for the workplaces. We thank you for the homes. Every area covered by the blood. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We trust that you are walking in healing tonight. That you're walking in freedom tonight. That you're walking in deliverance tonight. 
we believe God is a healer. Amen. He sets the captives free. Amen. He breaks the bind of the enemy. Thank you, Jesus, that you are walking in peace and peace that endureth in the name of Jesus. Let's join our hearts tonight in worship. Let's join our hearts in praise. We thank God that he's in the midst of us. I sense his presence already, and I trust that you do the same wherever you are. Let's worship the Lord in Jesus' name. and share. You always share. Uh, share with somebody else. We want to invite them in so that they may experience the same glory that you're experiencing. So go ahead and share this uh, on your page. Bless you.
Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. There right here. God is here. God is here. God is here. Right where you need him. God is here. being right here in this space in this moment in this hallelujah thank you Jesus we sense your very presence right here Father when our hearts are overwhelmed hallelujah we can run to a rock that's higher than us and find that there is safety Find that there is security and find that there is help in his presence. Father, I sense your strength being renewed in the hearts of your people. I sense, oh yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory. We sense your help, God. Yes, Lord. We sense your help in this room. We sense your help in this room. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for sending help right now. Oh, yes, Father. Your glory fills every atmosphere. Your glory fills every household. Your glory fills every room. For you are God. And besides you, there is none other. You are the everlasting God. You are he that was and is and is to come. There is no shadow of turning in you. You remain the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. 
you're the same God. And we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you ah, yeah, yeah. We give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Go ahead and give God a praise. Give him worship right where you are. This is your moment. This is your moment. Hey, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, my say. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the wind of your spirit. Thank you for the wind of your spirit. Hey, thank you for the wind of your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. Blow in every household. Blow in every atmosphere. Blow in every arena. Oh, yes, God. Lift your people. Lift your people. Lift your people, Lord. Lift your people. Hey, hey. Lift your people. Yes, Lord. Thank you that you're the glory and the lifter. Oh, yes. You are the glory and the lifter of our heads. Woo! Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. You are mighty. You are perfect in all of your ways. Holy Spirit, you are perfect in all of your ways. powerful anointing in the atmosphere right now. With a great agreement and great witness. Hallelujah! A great witness of the presence and the power of God. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Somebody was waiting for this moment. Somebody was waiting just for this moment. Thank you, Father. Someone said, if I could just make it in with the saints of God, if I could just make it into the room, if I can just make it into his presence, I know that everything will be all right. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, saints of God, God has just done something in the hearts of his people, and he's lifted somebody, hallelujah, that needed a lifting. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so grateful that he's faithful and he's mindful of us. He loves us uh, in such a beautiful way, in such a magnificent way, uh, more than we could even imagine, uh, more than we could even, even try to figure out or make happen. God just loves us. And he's so kind. Oh, the kindness of God. The kindness of God. The kindness of God. I'm sensing the kindness of God. Praise his name. Thank you, Jesus. Well, amen. <laughs> Somebody said that was me. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. We're glad me was in the house because the rest of us got the benefit of me. <laughs> the rest of us got the benefit of me pulling, pulling on him. And when you pulled on him, he just came on in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're grateful tonight for you being with us. Thank you for joining us, the Body of Christ Worship Center, by way of the refuge. We thank you for uh, being a part of our family being a part of our household in the spirit, being part of what God is doing in this season. And yes, he's doing some magnificent things, mm -hmm. um, things that we would have never imagined uh, him to do in this 2020 year, uh, unprecedented year in so many, so many ways. Uh, however, God has remained faithful. And one thing about God, uh, and that is, he won't change. He's going to be the same God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things change, circumstances change, people change, uh, jobs change, children change, everything changes. But one thing about God, he remains the same. And if we can't find any other comfort, any other joy, we can find joy in his faithfulness 
His consistency. Mm -hmm. Amen. His consistency as we run to him. This is a praying season, a praying time, a time for us to be calling upon his name, to be seeking his face like never before. Uh, if you had not been a person of prayer, of diligent and faithful prayer uh, pre-COVID, I would imagine that by now, in this seventh or eighth month uh, that we're moving into, uh, that you have become a person of prayer, that you become a person of consecration, that you become a person of the word of God and, and, and the presence of God. You have become that person. And I trust that since you've become that person, your whole life has gotten better. Your whole life has gotten better. You know, for years and for, for most of our lives, we thought the only way we're going to get better is if we're in the physical church building around physical people. But God has a way of pulling us aside and ministering to us one-on-one -on -one by his spirit directly. Amen. Amen. And we know that it's in order for us to gather. It's according to the word of God. It's in order for us to assemble according to the word of God. It's, a, it's in order for us to call for the elders of the church, for them to lay hands on us. It's according to the word of God. There's also uh, the part, though, that we sometimes forget. There's nothing you can get corporately, or let me say it differently. You can't get corporately what you can get privately. Oh, no. Mm -mm. Uh, because the corporate expression is what happened in private. Where is that in the Bible? The Bible says uh, what's done in secret will be rewarded openly. I'm paraphrasing. What's done in secret, what's done in the closet, what's going to, is going to be manifest so everybody's going to know. When you have been spending time in the presence of God individually, by the time you come in the presence of others, they're going to see glory on you. They're going to see the power of God on your life. Example, Moses. When Moses came off the mountain after having spent time in the presence of God and talking with God and getting instruction from God, when he came from the mountain, the Bible says he glowed, his face glowed. He had the evidence. God smeared something. Lord, I praise your holy name. Lord, okay, I'm, uh, I shouldn't even go here, but I'm just going to finish this thought. Uh, God smeared something on here. And what is smearing? Smearing is the anointing of God being placed upon your face, being placed upon your, hallelujah, being placed upon you so that it is undeniable that the hand of God is upon your life. Lord, I praise you. That's only done in the closet. That's only done in the secret place. When you stayed there long enough, evidence of his power, the evidence of his glory starts to just exude out of you. And so when the, when the men were on their way into the temple, <laughs> their shadow, their shadow caused people to, all right, you better rescue me. Uh, their shadow caused people to be healed. Absolutely. Their shadow. I'm talking about just the essence of who, Lord, I praise you. Can you imagine standing in the presence of God long enough until your shadow start healing folks? And so when they were entering the temple, on one occasion, there was a beggar. We know the story. The beggar said, hey, uh, uh, alms, alms, money, money, alms, alms, money, money, because that what he, is what he was accustomed to. That is what he was trained to do, be dependent on people to meet his need. But uh, the disciples said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee in the name. Hmm. They had the name. And not only did the man get healed and was able to walk, but the man got his dignity back. No longer was he a beggar. No longer was he hungry. No longer was he dependent on others. The man could get a job simply because he had the activity of his limb. We think just about the healing, of mir the miracle healing. No, it went beyond that. God gave him his dignity back. Yes, he did. Thank you, Jesus. He was no longer waiting. No longer sitting on the sidelines hoping and wishing and praying that somebody would come along and drop a coin or drop this or drop that. No, he got his dignity. And the Bible says he got up and went running and leaping and praising God. Yes. The same people that walked by him going in church found him in the same temple running and leaping and praising God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it was in the name. And when we release the name, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. When we release the name, after having been in his presence, mm -hmm. miracles happen. Mm -hmm. People get their dignity back. Lives are restored. Relationships are mended. Families are healed. Connections are made. Why?
because we took the time to wait in his presence. I believe the same healer is in the room. <laughs> That's a good place right there if you need a healing just to agree. I believe that the healer is in the, in the room. Just tell yourself, lay hands on your old body and say, in the name, in the name. of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Be, made be made whole. Oh, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. From the crown of my head yeah, Lord. to the soles of my feet, be made whole mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Say something about Please that say overlay. something. <laughs> hey, <laughs> it is what it is. Woo! We're here, right? We're here now. You're talking about uh, the apostles walking by and people being healed by their shadow. Holy Spirit just said to me, "I over." God said, "I've I overlaid myself." Come on here. This is this is really this is how I operate. You, you get a chance. <laughs> they look in the New Testament. We get to see. The, the, uh, 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 what is reminiscent of God on the mountain with Moses. Lord, help me. Okay, some of y'all who know me, you know this is one of my favorite places. So in Exodus 33, right? Moses says to God, if I found favor in your sight, yes. show your, your glory. Yes. Right? He says, well, you know, you can't take all of that, but I, I have a place in the cleft of the rock that right. I, I'll hide, I'll hide you, you, right? Mm -hmm. So in Exodus 34, Moses goes up as God has commanded, right? He goes up into the mountain to meet with God. God hides him in the cleft of the rock as he said he would, right. and he moves his hand after he lit, went by. So Moses got to see where God was. Where God was. And Moses' life was changed by where God was. He didn't even get to look at him head on. He didn't get to look at him straight on. He could. He wouldn't have been able to take all of that. God, he protected him until he passed by and removed his hand. And Moses couldn't hardly take where God was. Where God was. <laughs> the Bible says that when God, after God revealed Himself, the Bible says Moses made haste and worshipped. Yes, yes, yes. He came off of that mountain, transformed forever, changed forever. And this is the grace of God that was overlaid on those apostles that when they passed by, people's lives were changed by where they were. And so they were healed and delivered by the overlay. <laughs> by the overlay and what was? What? <laughs> okay, so now, now, now really, this is a whole problem because now we're talking about a God that was and is and will be at the same time. Mm. You know, that, that conversation messes me up every time I consider it. Yeah. That God is before, after, and will be hmm. at the same time. All at the same time. And that's because he's not bound by time or space. He's not subject to time. So everywhere where you were, he's there. Where you are and where you will be. Where you will be. He's already there. And even where you desire to be. Yeah. He's already there. Waiting for you, amen, for time to time, for time to catch up with him. To catch up with what's already done in eternity. That's all it is. We're not waiting for God to do anything. We're just waiting for time to catch up with eternity. My and God. manifest what was done in the past. Mm -hmm. Lord, I praise your holy name. This is good news. And so we're talking about the overlay. You know, uh, 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 jewelry, jewelry. Um, I thought of jewelry when you said it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when they, they took a, 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 a not precious metal and would overlay it, mm -hmm. overlay it with gold. And so we, you know, back in the day when you were a kid, you had this this bling bling that wasn't really bling bling. It was just an overlay. Uh, the thing about the bling bling uh, was that uh, that we had at that time is after over time the overlay would wear off. Right. And so Moses had to find him. Lord, help me. Moses had to cover his face, I believe, for two reasons. For two One, reasons. so that he could shield the people from something that they were not ready to experience because they had not been in that same place. Yeah. That was number one. But I also believe that the overlay started to fade. Mm -hmm. And so Moses had to keep his face veiled. covered, keep himself veiled, so that the people knew, wouldn't know that he, the glory that he had once experienced was starting to lift. Why? Because if the people see flesh, they will no longer see God. 
This is why we have to stay in the closet. This is why we have to stay in his presence. This is why we have to stay consecrated. This is why we have to stay seeking his face, face because we don't ever want people to see flesh. We want them to see glory. Absolutely. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Way too far off the lesson, uh, and way too far off in Romans chapter 7 in that middle part. Way too far off, uh, because really, uh, Romans chapter 7 in the middle part starts to talk about, again, flesh and spirit. It, it, it talks about what happens when one or the other rules. Yeah. It talks about conflict mm -hmm. between flesh and spirit. I'm not going to go read it right now because I, we, we don't want to pause. We, we, we want to get all of this out before we run out of time. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so we won't spend a whole lot of time reading it. You open your Bibles and read starting in verse 7. Go down to about verse uh, 13, 14. Uh, maybe, yeah, about 15. Uh, read that section and you will see and, and hear and discover uh, that when God uh, made provision for salvation, death was, uh, excuse me, sin was still trying to rule. And the Bible says that sin became sin or noticeable sin when the law was made uh, made evident. Why? Is it, is it that the law itself was sinful or, or wrong or deathly? No. The law has its purpose, had a purpose to magnify things that were not like God. Why? Ultimately, to drive us to him. Yes. And so when, when we saw lust, when we experienced lust, we wouldn't have known there was lust. If we, the Bible says, this the same scripture says, we wouldn't have known that there was lust or covetousness if the, if the Bible didn't say, thou shalt not covet. That's what is covet? Mm -hmm. We didn't know what covet was. We were just doing what we, what we did. And, and the message Bible says, if it wasn't careful, if we weren't careful and the law wouldn't come, we would have dressed up our covetousness and made it look holy. Mm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We would have dressed up what we were doing and called that holy. But God had to set a standard and he had to set a, a, a bar of understanding so that we would know how we were to walk according to his heart. Because we got separated from God, we no longer knew what God's heart was. Uh oh, There was a time when we walked with God pre-fall, Adam, hello, when we walked with God uh, without separation, we knew his very heartbeat and what would please him even before we even before we had to think about it, simply because we weren't God. God was doing what God does. Yes. But when we got separated from him, we no longer had the ability and, and, and means to understand his heart. This is why we need the Holy Ghost. Yes, I know. We don't like talking about it, but I will tell you, uh, the Holy Ghost is necessary. I, I say this all the time. One of the purposes of the Holy Ghost is to lead us and to teach us about Jesus. Absolutely. The Bible says that he will lead you into all truth. Right. What is truth? Jesus is truth. Yeah. And it goes on to say in that passage that he will testify of you. Of, Jesus said, he'll testify of me. Of me. The He'll Holy testify comes, of me. Yeah, he comes into us to reveal Jesus to us. Mm -hmm. Our bishop says the Bible is the whole Bible. The whole book. The whole book. book about Jesus. It's a book about Jesus. Huh? The whole thing. Every, every road is leading yeah. to Jesus. Mm -hmm. If it goes any other way, that's not the word of God. Mm -mm. If it goes in any other method, or that's not, that's not the place, okay. that's not the presence of God. Every road leads to Jesus, whether it's to help us see how much we need him or how to help us to see how much he's revealed or help us to see how, how magnificent he is. Every road leads to Jesus. And so we need the Holy Ghost in our lives. Yeah, I'll, I'll be, I'll be uh, less old school and I'll just use some of you current words. We need the Holy Spirit. You know, you know, I got to say it nicely because y'all don't like the other one. Y'all scary. Uh, but anyway, uh, we need the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. in our lives so that we can be saved and walk in the power of the Almighty God every day of our life. And let me just tell you this. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you ain't getting off the ground. <laughs> say la. That's old, that's old teaching. That's old teaching. Say la. Right it's the fuel in the engine that's going to get this plane off the ground. And so we have to be filled with his spirit. And when we are filled with the spirit, we will not fulfill what? The lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. 
We talk about sin in this passage. Mm -hmm. uh, do saints sin? Have they fallen into sin? Yes. What is sin? Missing the mark. Mm -hmm. Coming short. Mm -hmm. Falling short. O disobedience. That's sin. Yes. Have we done that? Yes. Mm -hmm. But are we sinners? No. Sinners practice sin. That's right. They get good at it. And they keep doing it. <laughs> ah, oh, yes. Amen. They keep doing it. Mm -hmm. But we're not sinners. We're not sinners. Right. We are children of God that have been saved by his blood. Yes. So we don't practice sin. Mm -hmm. We practice holiness. <laughs> because the Bible says, be holy for I am holy. And when we have the Holy Ghost in our lives, mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost will make you holy. If we yield to him. If we submit to him. If we let him reign. And so this passage talks about sin having us be in a position of death. But we were rescued from sin by the blood of Jesus. So that we can now walk in life, in life eternal. Life eternal does not be begin after we have had our funeral. No. Life does not, life eternal does not begin on, on the streets of gold. Life eternal starts right now. Yes. Right now. When we learn to walk in the newness of life. When we learn to walk in the newness of life. Yeah. We don't like talking about these things uh, uh, today, you know, but, but I'm going to tell you something. Uh, saints of God, people of God, children of God, uh, when it comes to trying to figure out how can I live this life called salvation? How can I live this life called holy? How can I? It's simple. It's simple. Do what the Bible says. Stop making excuses and stop making uh, uh, all kinds of rationale uh, to, to qualify, quantify, and justify what we want to do. Really, it's a matter of what you want to do. And our heart being willing to submit to God. We don't like that S word. I know. It's okay. Uh, but, but, but the reality of it is this. Submission is really coming under and lifting up. That's all it is. All the thing I'm doing when I submit to God is saying, God, you know you're smarter than me. <laughs> you're, you're brighter than me. You know more than me. So I'm going to come under your wisdom and I'm going to bear your, your wisdom up. And as I bear your wisdom up, you're taking me up with you. I haven't lost anything. As a matter of fact, I've gained everything. I've gained everything. I want to say this about holiness. Um, to be holy does not, does not require you to be perfect. At all. Now, there's a, a, a state of perfection as it relates to our position in, in, Christ. The, in Christ. That's right. Um, and in, the, in our spirit man. That's right. Um, that's been redeemed. Um, but... Um, Holy, being holy does not mean you're flawless. Does not mean that you don't make mistakes. That's right. Holiness, um, in Bible study, um, there is a principle we call the law of first mention. That's right. One of the first places we see the term holiness is in uh, uh, Exodus, Exodus, where God gives Moses the instruction about the, the priests That's right. and how to set the priests aside. That's correct. Um, um, Aaron and, and, and his and his sons and his son mm -hmm. setting the priests aside and all that their all of their job requirements mm -hmm. as priests and how they would attend to the things of the house of God. How That's they right. would tend to the house of God. And everything about them was to be dedicated to the service of the house of God, maintaining the, the temple, maintaining the house of God. That's right. And a part of their garment, on their garment, on their head, was written, holiness Holy. unto, the, unto Lord. the Lord. Mm -hmm. So it, the Lord said to me, this gives you an idea of what I mean when I say holiness. In other words, when God requires us to be holy, he only requires that all of us be available to him. Always. Mm -hmm. That means there is no place, it doesn't mean that I don't make mistakes, doesn't mean that I'm without flaw. Doesn't mean that uh, you know that I don't owe anybody an apology. 
um, you know, that I don't make any missteps. It just means that there is no place in my heart that is off limits to his presence. Lord, I praise you. There is no place in my soul that he can't talk, hallelujah, that he can't talk to me about. That's exactly right. Ooh, you know, you know about those places <laughs> in our hearts, those places in our soul that the whole, that God can't talk to us about. Mm -hmm. That we, you know, I love you, Jesus. You know, we're in those places. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more, more than, anything. than anything. Take my heart, take my mind. Yeah, all of that. All, you know, all we that. sing all of those songs. And then when he says, all right, now that right there, I want to talk to you about that. Oh, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh-uh, we're not no, talking about not that. Not that part. We're not talking about that. That's, that's when holiness is not in play. Holiness is just that everything about me is available to him. There is nothing in me that is uh, uh, is for sale for any other bidder. There is no higher bidder. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in me that's available um, for anybody else. That's right. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing else available nothing. for anybody else. Mm -mm. That's a big statement. Mm -hmm. And if you ponder that thought in your, your heart, have I come to a place in my walk with God mm -hmm. that I'm available to him first before anything else, yeah. even myself, even my own desires, even my own aspirations, have I considered him first? Holiness is not a dress, it's not an uh, earring, it's not a makeup, it's not any of those things mm -hmm. uh, that, that were deemed what holiness is or looks like. Holiness is not a mean look. <laughs> like you've been, been smelling onions all night, as my, my deacon would say. Yeah, that's not holiness. Holiness yeah. is not a, a, a facial expression. Holiness is a walk. Yeah. It's a walk. Again, go back to those, those, those apostles, those disciples. Yeah. When, as they walked, the holiness of God mm -hmm. took over everywhere they went. Yeah. Hallelujah. And when you are a holy person, I don't care what arena you get invited into, if you are ever given an invitation in, what you are bringing in is not just yourself. You are bringing in the very essence and presence of God. Hence, that place must change. Mm -hmm. Because everything has to come subject to the power of God. Mm -hmm. Everything has to become, become subject to the name of Jesus. And if I've lived a holy life, then I'm more available, go back to your point, mm -hmm. then I'm more available for God to use me whenever he chooses. Right. Your fine china. Uh, those of you who have it, and you have china cabinets, you know those things. We, we, we know those things. Uh, and we put our fine china in china cabinets. We put it in a safe place, a secure place. Mm -hmm. And we may not have used it all year long. But the time we decide that we won't want to use it, one of the things we want to make sure is, is that china has been kept not only safe, but it's been kept clean. Mm -hmm. So we don't take it out of the cabinet and put food right on it. Even though, even though, even though it's never been, it hadn't been utilized all year long. We take it out of the cabinet, and what do we do? We still wipe it down. <laughs> and so it's the example where Jesus was talking about a, 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 a washing, the two forms of washing. Mm -hmm. There is the washing that was done at the bathhouse from head to toe, a full cleansing washing. But as the person went on their way home, by the time they made it to their house, dirt got on them. And so when they got in the house, there was a, 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 a tub or, or a basin right at the door. Why? Because as I walked, something got on me. Lord, help me. As I walked, something got on me. So don't tell me that you're perfect. Uh, because just by walking around, mere walking around, something get, will get on you. Exposure to this culture. Exposure to this society. There's the, you got to move in and out. We've got to move in and out of the systems of this world. We've got to move in and out of the places, the mountains uh, in this society. And stuff is going to get on us. This is where holiness comes into this play. This is where holiness comes where, into play. It's that process of always getting the stuff off you. Getting well, the right, stuff I off. Went in, I went in to handle your business, but while I was in there, I think some stuff, some stuff got gotten, on me. Might have gotten on me. So I, I take the time to let it, to let God wash over me with his word with his word we're washed by the washing of the of water by of the, the word, word. Uh -huh. yes yes uh -huh. word. yeah so we allow his word to pour over us his presence to wash over us we get it's, a, it's that it's that practice of debriefing with god it's that that practice of going into places that he sends us 
and then coming out and debriefing. In other words, unloading at his feet. That's right. Mm -hmm. Taking up, laying all of the, laying all of the glory at his feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Laying all of the stuff that we don't need. Bringing back to him the praises of men. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the process. That's the process of holiness. That's where holiness comes into play. And, and so this next section in this last part, chapter seven, mm -hmm. Paul starts telling his own story. He starts telling his own story. Yeah. He said, every time I tried to do good, stuff kept getting on me. <laughs> My Lord. And by the time, you know, I found myself doing the stuff that I didn't, that I didn't intend to do it, uh, I'm, 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 I'm caught again. Mm -hmm. I get cleaned up, something else got on me. I get cleaned up, something else got on me. You don't take a shower or a bath, you know, once a month. At least I hope not. Well, my God. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Um, we, we, we pray that's not the case. Praise God. Because even if you stayed in your house for 31 days, if it's the 31 days in the, in, the, in, the, in the month, you stayed in your house by yourself 31 days, naturally, naturally, your body is going to start to exude uh, and excrete oils and, and toxins and and, 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 and and there's dust in the air you are made from you are made from dust and so you start shedding there's stuff plucking in the air if you don't watch everybody gonna know see and this is the problem this is the problem that I have when people try to hide sin when they try to hide uh, dirt and when they try to hide in a place where, where they act like you know I'm good I'm good I'm good no no you're not I smell you No, you're not good. Mm -hmm. And everywhere you go is getting messed up. Mm -hmm. And so we got people that are dirty touching clean folk. Uh, because we've not taken the time to watch. Mm -hmm. To watch. To cleanse. To say, God, I need you every day. Every day. Multiple times during the day. <laughs> Multiple times during the day. Yeah. Checking in. It's that check it. It's that checking in and letting being so sensitive to his voice that right when you just engaged in or you're about to engage in a conversation, you don't have any business. Right. Or when you're about to take in something that you don't have any business. When you're about to watch something, you go, mm, mm, -mm. You, you're there's a radar that goes off in the Holy Ghost. You don't, you don't need this. You don't need this in, on, on the inside. You don't need this in your spirit. You don't need this on you. Just allowing God, listening to the presence of God, to the Spirit of God, and allowing Him to lead us and guide us so that we don't um, end up entangled in stuff that, you know, because ain't nobody got time for Ain't nobody got time for entanglements in this season. Uh, oh, I, 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 I wasn't, yeah. You went there. Yeah, but um, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That's the Bible says. Yeah. Yeah. No entanglements. <laughs> <laughs> no entanglements. Hmm. No entanglements. It's the truth. Ain't nobody got time. We don't have time. We don't have time. It takes too much to get you from being snared up. It takes too much to get you from being tangled up. And then you got to start over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He says, stand fast in that Galatians, since we've referenced it, Gal Galatians 5 and 1. He says, stand, stand fast, fast in the liberty. liberty. And this is what God has brought us into. This is what he's invited us into. This is what he delivered us. He delivered us out of bondage and brought us into liberty. And he says, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. And, and be not entangled again, again with the yoke of bondage. In other words, once I bring you into this new place of liberty, don't, don't go you back. choose. Don't go don't back. Don't you turn around and choose again bondage. Because at that point, it is a choice. Yeah, it is a choice. And it really, and, and isn't that something how... Um, you know, it, can, it makes me think about um, Lot and his and his precious wife. Yeah, yeah. Sister, Lot. Sister Lot. Sister Lot. Don't even have a name. Sister Lot 
We don't even get to know. I've, I've said this at BCWC before. The Lord said to me, look, he said, look at this. He said, we don't even get to know her name. Her name is not even recorded. We don't even get to know who she could have been, what mark in the earth she could have made, what impact on other lives she could have had because she turned around, because she looked back. We don't even get to we don't even get to know her name because she looked back. And the Bible says there in, in Galatians, stand fast in this place. You stand right here in this place of liberty and don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't look back. You run the risk of having your name huh, recorded. Erased, recorded as recorded as the one who turned back. back. The one who looked back. And that's it. That's all we get to see. So, you know, don't trip about Paul talks about in this in this chapter seven toward the end. He talks about this other war, this other law, and his members that he notices. It's real. It's real. A no, it's, real. it's absolutely real. It's yeah. absolutely real. But <laughs> thanks be unto God. I'm gonna go to the last verse. Mm -hmm. I may as well read it. Yeah. Last verse says, "I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord." So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Let me go one verse up. Yeah. Uh, uh, verse 24 says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Right. And then he says, I thank God. Mm -hmm. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Mm -hmm. He says with the mind. And this is the renewed mind. It's that, it's that renewed one that we need that's talked about in Romans 12. It's the renewed mind that we're able right. to serve right. the law of God. Right. It's the only way. Yeah. That's the only way. Absolutely. We're not going back. Nope. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we're going to be the children of Israel who, who, who literally had a conversation about Egypt and how, better, how much better it was <laughs> than where they were. Mm -hmm. How much better it was than freedom. I... And God... Cause them to make a decision. Won't go back. Right. <laughs> Who's on the Lord's side? Step over here. Right. The others stay over there. Yeah. God opened up the ground. Mm -hmm. All right. You want body? You want death? Let me just give it to you instantly. Mm -hmm. That's what you chose. Yeah. I choose life. Indeed. How about you? Yeah. We choose life. Amen. Y'all, we're sorry. We got a little happy tonight, I guess, uh, and we just took off running. Uh, we didn't give you all much time to catch up. He started it and I followed him. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, entanglements. Uh huh. He started <laughs> and I was just following my man of God. Amen. <laughs> and we thank God. Amen. This is good. This is yeah. good. This is good. This is good. Yeah. We'll continue this walk through the, in the book of Romans, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we'll, we'll crack into chapter 8. Wow, and I know every one of you all are so familiar with chapter 8, but don't don't just know what you know. Ask God what else is there for me to know yeah. in chapter 8. He's going to reveal some things. He's going to show us some things. Yeah. He's going to reveal himself. This is standing out for me. A couple of you have, have put it in the comments. Um, choose life. Choose life. Everybody put that in the comments. That's what we're doing tonight. When we choose to obey God, we're choosing life. So everybody put in those comments, choose life. Choose life. I choose life. I choose life. I choose life. Yeah. I choose life. Thank you, Lord. We referenced it on, I think you referenced it on, referenced it on Sunday. There's a way that seems right unto the man. Oh, man. Last week. Mm -hmm. Last week. But the end thereof. Uh -huh. Are the ways of are death. Are the ways of death. Mm -hmm. So we choose life. We're going to watch God give us life Amen. more abundantly. Amen. Thank God for each of you. We love you tonight. Mm -hmm. He's been so faithful to us. He's been so kind. Amen. And we just want you, we want you to be encouraged. Uh, a lot of things happening in the earth realm. A lot of things happening in our personal lives and individual and ministries or wherever we are. Yeah. Uh, but through it all and in it all, God remains faithful. He is our anchor. He's our strength. He's our help in trouble. And we just thank God for that. Amen. We love you tonight. If you're giving, go ahead. You can do that. Uh, BCWCGA.org. You can go online and go ahead and give if you like to do that. God bless you for that. We thank you for that. Uh, you can uh, cash app your give dollar sign BCWCGA. 
dollar sign BCWCG, BCWCGA. Amen. Through Cash App. Or if you want to just mail your gift, you can do that. BCWC 1514, 13th Avenue, Columbus, yes, Georgia, 31901. I love it. I love yes, those notes. Beautiful. I love Say, those notes. Beautiful. I love the folk that are choosing life. Yes, <laughs> you awesome. know, when you choose life, you choose him. Because yes. he is life. That's right. In him we life. The life of the life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that good news? Yes, it is. We love you tonight. We want you to have a great evening. Know that God is doing miracles every day. Yes, he's and a miracle He's worker. a miracle worker, and he's faithful to himself mm -hmm. by manifesting his promises. Yes, indeed. And so we say always together that we believe that the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and we shall see it together. We love you. God bless you. Go with God. Love you.